Hey, this is Aaron Conley. I make uh, Sabertooth Swordsman, and you're listening to 11 O'Clock Comics. <laughs> Sounds a little different there, Dad. It did. What's up with the acoustics there in that room? I mean, I'm in, I'm in the spare bedroom upstairs, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's not as cluttered as, as, as the office back home. Paper not, absorbs not. a lot of sound. Yeah, there's no <laughs> stacks and stacks of books and surrounded by. Oh, but isn't that a wonderful place to be, though? Surrounded Sur- by books. Surrounded by books. Yes. Fuck yes. That's why I want to die. Uh, yeah. it, screw the casket. Just fill the vault with paper and then just throw some concrete over it. We're done. Then there, there's later on in the episode. Then uh, I'll pose a question to you two. Okay. Oh boy, questions are good. Yes. 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 And, and we have a lot of answers for you because this is Eleven O'clock Comics episode nine hundred and ten, and I'm Vince B. Ooh, you are Vince B. I am David A. Price. And we have a guest this week. Not so much a guest as just a family member. A member Re- another member of the family, yeah. Yeah, returning to the fold. Um, he's a genius, period, and, and a master illustrator uh, responsible mm-hmm. for the the uh, the masterpiece that is Kankor. It's Matthew Allison. Hey, everybody. You are a genius. Good evening. No, no. I, the oh, only time yeah. I've ever thought that was when I was on mushrooms. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was in the basement of this like S and M club with my my friends. I'm I'm a genius. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> well, that that was the universe telling you something you haven't come to learn yet. Okay, but you you will. And yeah. and I have information for our listeners because cheapgraphicnovels.com. That's CheapGraphicNovels.com has Matthew's graphic novel, Cancor. You can get it at a sizable discount, among other things like omnibus editions, trade paperbacks, manga, omnibu, all that stuff at a fraction of what you're going to pay at the other stores. And you're going to be really smart and because you're going to fire up the, your browser and go to CheapGraphicNovels.com, look around, and you're going to say, holy crap, this stuff is cheap. I want this. And I want this, but whoa, 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 big dog, slow down. Because you don't want to order too much. Because if you order, you will receive an email confirmation. And you're going to reply to that email confirmation saying, Hey, Max, 11 o'clock comics sent me. Max is going to say, Next order shipping is on me, big fella. So then that's when you order the multitude of paper. It's very simple. Cheap graphic novels. Bloop, bloop, bloop. That's mm. obviously not that simple. Cheap graphic novels. dot com. Go there and save. And and Cancor is proof that really great things come in slightly smaller packages because it's not your traditional graphic novel format size. And I really like that. Well, the hardcover is the yes. Ad House book wasn't. That was right, a right. six by nine. That's the one I have. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and and I have to say this about uh, Max and and uh, cheap graphic novels because I I ordered an artist edition uh, from him a while back and there were some issues with the shipping and it he handled it like a pro. Great customer service, so um, yeah. highly recommend uh, cheap graphic novels. He is a mensch. True yep. that. Yep. Well, I'm going to be the bummer, probably. Because Why? I'm drinking just blackberry lemonade sparkling water. That's not a bummer. Yeah, it's the most it's delicious. Sparkling, it's blackberry. Yeah, and it's the, I think it's the most delicious drink on the planet. I love this stuff. I buy it by the case. Nice. That's awesome. I take, uh, take a bath in it. Well, hey now. Yeah. <laughs> That'll offset the axe body spray. What are you drinking, Matthew? Dick. I have got a... <laughs> I got a can of CBD infused sparkling water, uh, mm. lemon lime flavor from a company called Untitled Art, and it doesn't taste very good because you can kind of taste the hemp oil. But oh, okay. It, I need it. I've had a rough couple of days, so I need that CBD. Maybe it'll nice. kick in. Mm-hmm. Oh, and 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 I have a visitor now. Now, there's somebody somebody in the room with me. Um, Dad wants to see the magic happen. Uh, I had uh, a couple of glasses of Malbec with dinner, and since I don't want to um, wake up in a coma, I am just 
finishing the night with uh, with some water. But uh, but yeah, and and that's that's also a shout out to Jason since he's not with us tonight. Um, it's so sad. He's he's overseas right now, probably. There you go. But uh, yeah, yeah. So that's that that that's the drink roll call tonight. Sorry, nice. Christopher Burton. Nice. Well, Matthew came up with a neat little, uh, I don't want to call it a game, but an exercise for this episode. I'm calling it the Big Two Switcheroo, but he can explain the finer points of it. What are we doing, Matthew? Well, this came about um, or sometime last year. I was you know, flipping through long boxes, and I was pulling out the Dave Gibbons uh, Green Lantern issues which are incredible. I love that run. Um, and as I was looking at his stuff, I was like, man, he would have been a great replacement artist for Steve Root on Nexus when I think it was after like 54 or something that, that Steve Root took off for a little while. Um, and then I started thinking like, you know, what else is, has Gibbons done outside of DC work and the work he did in, in the UK? And I realized he didn't do a whole lot of Marvel work. There's a little bit out there, but not a whole lot. So I was trying to like think of you know other artists that you associate with a particular publisher who really didn't do a whole lot of work for the other, especially you know specifically talking about big two stuff. Um, so I know you guys, <laughs> you get feedback on your your episodes where you've got guests and you get you know maybe more positive feedback when you got lists. So I'm like, well, you got a guest, maybe we'll do a list and it'll offset. We'll, we'll zero it out. Nice. So. It's good thinking. Yeah. 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 I, I have to say, though, there was an ease with the Marvel side. Like, I could find mm-hmm. a DC book for almost every Marvel artist. Yeah. But the inverse is not true. There was a lot of, um, a, a good amount of DC artists that I could not find any appropriate Marvel books. And that got me thinking, like, Ooh. why is that true? Like, okay, not to, you know, cast some shade on these guys, but where do you put Kurt Swan on a Marvel? Oh, on a, like, wait, I, have on my I list. got one. I have him on my really? list. Really? Yeah. Yes. I, I couldn't yeah. find anything for Kurt Swan. Same thing with Wayne Boring. Um, I almost put him down. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, I had, a, uh, and again, I have some self imposed rules. For this, <laughs> look at you. Yeah, because Putting on your backpack. now, because I, you know, the, if they did a small amount of work at the other company, I would consider them. But somebody like John Byrne, yeah, yeah, who like Byrne did a good amount of work for DC and yep. Marvel. So Byrne stricken, and uh, I was thinking Simonson. Nope, he did a, a a healthy amount of work for DC. So these are the guys from on, at least on my list that are primarily known as either a Marvel or a DC artist. That's how I, I was looking at it, too. And I I made a, 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 a realization today. I initially, when I, th- I threw this at you, Vince, I had said uh, classified Carmine Infantino as a primarily DC artist. And I think because of his time as an editor there, that's why I'm just always associating him with DC. But I looked him up on uh, Star Wars. On, uh, yeah, he did like yeah, long run on Star Wars. But he was all over Marvel in the 70s. He yeah. did a lot of like smaller runs, like you're saying, where he'd be on for two or three random issues. So no long runs. So he technically counts. Um, but uh, yeah, that was an interesting find today. That uh, for me, that similar in that boat was uh, Jerry Ordway because I know he helped yeah. burn out with Fantastic Four for a minute. Um, so that pretty much kind of just disqualified him. And on the flip side, um, I'm a huge fan of Greg LaRogue from his run on Marvel Team Up, but he did come over to DC and worked on The Flash for a while. So right. he was also yeah. removed from my list. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think it would be really cool if instead of us just going down the, our lists to state the artist before yep. saying what books we would put them on and, s- and see what both of you would answer. Okay. All right. I'm yeah. going st- to start. Okay. Ramona Fredon. Mm, I got one. Okay. Now you're cla- I'm obviously you're class in- classifying her as a DC artist. Yeah, I right? think we should start yeah. DC first and then okay. because it'll just yeah. mentally it'll just be easier just to block out the DC and then move on to Marvel. Okay, I got one that I'd like to see her do. Okay. Okay. 
I I would I <laughs> I could see I'd like a a Ramona Fantastic Four book. Wow. She did one issue, which is really, really good, that Joe Sinnott inked. It's so good. It's like the only, I think, full interior she did for Marvel. But I yeah, no I, I would have loved to have seen a longer run from her on that. She's, she did amazing on it. Fantastic. Okay. Now, I don't have... Oh, that's a inspired choice, uh, but I didn't put her on Fantastic Four. Okay. Um, I'm not going to say Namor because that's the obvious answer. Sure. <laughs> right. Yeah, that, and that was the other thing I tried to do. Like, if if somebody, so like if so like, um, I wouldn't want to put, uh, like I, well, if if I picked an artist, I wouldn't want to put them on the comparable version. Like, I wouldn't put Don Newton on Moon Knight just because it's the closest thing to like Batman. I did that. I started doing that a lot. It, you just mind automatically goes to that. Exactly. Like, yeah. You know, I, was so thinking, I, I was like, I well, Mr. Redondo tried. did Swamp Thing. I'd put him on Man Thing. Like, yeah, you know, right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Right. My first pick for Ramona was Daredevil. That's hmm. awesome. Okay. And I went a little crazy and, and list multiple um, books. I... <laughs> <laughs> For the sake of time, get out, I get out of town. But I'm, I'm not surprised you went above and beyond. Yeah, um, she'd also, I think, she'd excel on Captain America. Okay, because she's got a very clean style that I Absolutely. think would fit the character very well. I think she would be gangbusters on Nova. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. And my last pick for Ramona is the Inhumans. Oh yeah! That's that, oh man! Yep. Right? Think about her doing Medusa. Oh, Lockjaw. Yes, yes, yes. Medusa, especially. Yeah. All the women wow. would be very beautiful. All the men would be super handsome. I think she would do a great. You know, um, uh, uh, what was it? Bongo Comics, uh, who did the SpongeBob book? They brought Ramona in to do um, a bunch of stories within the SpongeBob comic, and they were great. It's like, why oh, wow. isn't this woman working more? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's interesting because I, you know, similarly, you know, you start thinking of, of female characters and I, I thought for her She Hulk. Right. Um, but then I, so I, I ch- totally cheated here. I made up a, an entirely new comic that doesn't exist. I would put her on an incredible Hulk version of Marvel Team Up called Ever Love and Hulk. So it would be her doing Hulk every issue, but then bringing in other heroes. So, That's a cool book. You know, not non existent, but why did they never do a, a Hulk team up? That would have been a no brainer. Yeah, especially they had the, thing. the time of the T V show. They had Marvel Twenty One with the thing, so I guess they didn't yeah. want to do two. Yeah, two. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But um we had the magazine. Which is odd because with DC you had DC Comics Presents and Brave and the Bold with DC's two biggest characters. And with Marvel you had Marvel Team Up with Spider Man and Marvel Two One with Thing. It's like how did you how'd you come up with Thing? to be the guy everybody's going to team up with he's not exactly your 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 biggest character that 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 comes to mind but i mean it worked it worked for 100 issues so sure yeah i think the character of ben Grimm was um so well developed that it was easy to write oh yeah stories with ben whereas i i guess the hulk would probably just be who is the hulk and encounter this issue and it's just an instant fight he's gonna fight and then they'll like Make up at the end of the issue, and then he'll just move on to the next character. Right, it was, that's it was true. pretty one I, note I, after a while. I wonder with the thing like at that point, you know, it's not like it is now where like everybody's a, a wiseacre. Everybody's got something snappy to say to 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 somebody else. But at the time, it was really, you know, the thing and Spider Man. Yeah, were the people where you could really get into the interactions with the other characters in a very snappy way. So that that could have had something to do with it. That's another kind of topic. Daredevil team up. Book. Yeah, it's another topic I would like to explore, like Wiseacres, because Ooh. at at Marvel, who else did you like? Maybe Hawkeye, right? Hawk Clint was a, yeah. a, a ball buster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And a but, sad sack. And yeah, yes. <laughs> oh but my man, God. could he pull in the women? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that that was my that was one of my that DC, DC picks, choice. Ramona. Oh, okay. Yeah. What do you have, Matthew? I have got. Let me pull it up again. So this one may be a little bit of a stretch because he, he did work for DC. I, I was thinking of this more of like, what did this person, where did this person work more often? And that was Alex Nino. Oh, he's um, on my list. I love you. He, he's more of a Warren 
guy, you know, yeah. did a lot of stuff for 1984 and stuff. But um, I would, I consider him a DC artist, and I would have put him on Doctor Strange. Great minds. Yep, that's that one awesome. of the books on my Alex Nino list. Okay. Or anything cosmic. I mean, you know, just the for way sure. he would, he would, you know, render galaxies and spaceships and all that stuff is awesome. Right. Dap, what would you put <sighs> Alex Nino uh, on? Oh man. Oh, with his the way. Oh man, with his with his lines. Uh, Thor. Mm. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, swinging that hammer, then the rest of like you know the Asgardians, and just in any sort of the of uh, anything that that Thor would come across. Yeah, I, I would. I'd like with the cape flowing. I yeah, I'd like. Yeah, all, and all the great buildings in Asgard. And I'm sorry, Vince, I jumped on you because you were supposed to guess first before I. Oh no, that's <laughs> okay. That's cool. Uh, but yeah, that's a very good choice. My Alex Nino list. Uh, they're all obvious choices. I think I have them on Man Thing, Doctor Strange. Warlock and Fantastic Four. I almost put Warlock. Oh, in. Yeah. Warlock is great. That's good. Yep. Uh, first artist I'll throw out from DC is a big favorite of mine, uh, Jim Aparo. Hmm. I know Vince probably doesn't have. Much. I don't have a damn. Exactly. I don't have anything for Jim Aparo because I don't like him. But that's okay. Exactly. I, I, know. I don't. I, I learned two things today. So I, I, I struggled with this because I, I had him on my list and I was trying to, to place, you know, what a good title would be. And I had that same revelation. Like, I don't think I really like Jim Aparo. <laughs> I, just, I feel like he's a really watered down Joe Kubert. And, um, and it's not to say, I mean, it's, I, 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 I appreciate the craft. I, I appreciate his skill level and, stylistically it just doesn't speak to me and i remember being you know really disappointed you know with how long he stayed on batman because i was just like i don't really like this art so sorry uh and i honestly could not think of a marvel title to put him on i think so. no i i get it and and it's and this is a case where uh i think an, an artist may speak to a fan based on where the fan where the reader latched onto them and and it was be the brave and the bold of course eventually that becomes batman and the outsiders uh he um he had he of course had had his run on on batman and detective um but i was thinking about him today and between the two main characters of the title and their supporting cast um i and because of the characters and and how um how different they are i um i would really really like to see uh jim aparo on power man and iron fist mm. between between the, the the martial arts with danny between colleen and misty because i do like i i, I do like jim's women especially well depending on the characters but uh yeah i i could i that was pretty much i i i I'm not going to say I struggled, but I thought about other characters that I could see him kind of just play around with. But as far as a book or a series, then that's that, that that's really the only one that kind of just popped into my head. I just thought of one I think might work is, is Cloak and Dagger. And Absolutely. Because yes. he, did, he did Phantom Stranger for a while, too, right? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, so I, I feel like he could handle that's that great. pretty well. Yes, yeah. I agree with you. Interesting. Yeah. And, and I, I don't. I, I said I don't like a pair. I don't dislike him. He just doesn't excite. Not, yeah, he doesn't, doesn't excite I, me. I, I, I really, I really like the the Joe Kubert comparison. Obviously, whereas Joe's line could be a little bit more more rough or or, or ragged, and, and based on the the subject matter, it, it's absolutely fitting. I mean, who doesn't love Joe's work? Jim is obviously a little bit more. I'm not gonna say polished, but but his it, a little bit of a cleaner line, especially when he's inked by Dan DiCarlo, uh, by, by by Mike DiCarlo. But um, yeah, even even when he's not inked by anybody, I, I can definitely, especially the way the char- the, the 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 elongated versions of the characters and 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 their faces uh, expressions, I could definitely see um, some cubertism there in Jim's work. Yeah. All right, I got a left field one. Hmm. Shelly Moldoff. Oh, wow. Huh. 
Huh. This is more a guess of where I think you would be going with that, but uh, Howard the Duck? Nope. No? Okay. I, I, oh man. I don't know why I can't shake Iron Man for some reason. Interesting. That's weird. Yeah, okay. No, I, who, who do you got? Uh, well, I have a fairly uh-huh. long list, but they're basically all the same corner of the Marvel Universe. I have Shelley on X-Men. Ecstatics, New Mutants, and I threw I threw the Inhumans in there too because Shelley did very um, idiosyncratic women, like you could tell a Shelley Moldoff woman, you know, when you you see one. Uh, I just think he has got a quirky, off kilter style that maybe the best book in that list is like Ecstatics because um, he didn't play primarily by the big two rules in terms of of um stylistic choices it's very odd style for i think one of the major publishers but uh i think well yeah. i w- i you gotta assume that all red is a fan oh sure yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah that's why i kind of stuck the ecstatics in there because yeah. if it, you know they're, they're they're speaking the same language albeit decades apart but yeah yeah, yeah. all right mm. what you got matthew I've got uh, Jose Luis Garcia Lopez. Ooh, so do I. What you got? Uh, <laughs> I got him. All too. right. So uh, for you and Jose, um, I'm gonna say the X Men. Okay, Vince. Well, because I don't want to say who I who I would love to see him on because that's going to be my list. So right. Okay. Um, one of the revelations that popped up during this exercise is that well to me that there are there's strata of dc artists there's there's the 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 workmanlike guys that got it done then there's the swiss army knives that could do anything Mm -hmm. and i don't think there's a wrong answer for garcia lopez because he's he's so versatile that he could basically be put on any book and do a great job um, I have uh, for uh, Jose Luis. I have Avengers, Captain America, Fantastic Four, X Men. Like I know it's 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 uh, just throwing every title at the guy. You're not really picking a best case scenario. So if I had to fine tune it, I would say Avengers. Okay. Be- because Garcia Lopez defined the look uh, for a long period of all of the DC characters yep. with that with that style guide. And yeah. I think he would do the same thing at Marvel. I think he was just a, he's a master. Yeah. Yeah. And you look at a book like, um, uh, Cinder and Ash and he could have done Punisher. Uh, you know, it's like, he's yeah. great with just standard human beings driving down the street as he is with, you know, people fighting on some other planet. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I just show, I mean, this is probably again, a cheat, this is actual comic, but uh, uh, put him on Marvel Team Up just yeah. again to see him draw as many characters as possible. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a very good answer. Yeah, it, which is and it's it's similar to one of my uh, Marvel artists to on a DC book, but uh, yeah, just for move things along. Uh, my 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 pick was was Avengers just because I want to see him draw as many characters as possible. Right, yep. and he would kill it. He would totally destroy 100%. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the the one th- thing that I, I, I could not find an artist for is uh, a DC artist to put on Incredible Hulk other than one. And that's Bernie Wrightson. See, I would go Nestor Redondo. Um, mm-hmm. But Wrightson, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, because you got that Marvel graphic novel that's so amazing. The the what is it called? Big changes with Hulk and the thing. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's just, it's beautiful, but it's so, it's like a little, it's almost a tease. And he yep. did a couple of, uh, incredible Hulk covers over the years. Like, uh, mm-hmm. the most notable one is, is the Hulk fighting the man thing. Like that cover is yep. just amazing. But, um, who would you put rights in on? Oh man. Um, I have him down here. Where did I put him? Uh, Ghost Rider. 
Yeah. The Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider. Yeah, he's on my list. Yep. Uh, shoot. What did I... I'll have to think on that one because I thought I had written something down for him for that, and now I can't remember what I chose. Oh. And I thought I had <laughs> it on my list. So. Um, um, I would go into it. the darker corners of the mob, yeah, obviously. You, you have to. You right. almost have to. Yeah, it, I mean... Again, putting him on man thing seems like an obvious choice, but he yep. does a great job doing it. In like you know, you put him on those seventies horror titles. You put him. You could obviously tomb a Dracula. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, I think um, my soul is not complete because I've never seen an extended run on Doctor Strange by uh, Bernie Wrightson. I, mm-hmm. I think he he just would have blew the doors off that book. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but I mean, Cloak and Dagger, um, Werewolf by Night, uh, Frankenstein Monster, they're, they're always there. It, it's almost redundant to say that that uh, the Living Mummy, like Wrightson, just mm-hmm. would have just would have uh, chewed up the the pages with those titles. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. What next? Uh, what's Matthew got? Well, we did my next one already. We did Ramona Fraden. Okay. Uh, and so then I had Kurt Swan. I have a Kurt Swan as well, so do I. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say, again, because I don't want to get mine away. Uh, huh. I'll throw it out. West Coast Avengers. Okay. Wow. <laughs> He's the chunkiest West Coast Avengers ever. Right. How could it be? Oh, it's it's not going to be any tested. worse than Al Milgram's version. <laughs> uh, talk about, yeah, oh God, I remember buying that first issue and I was, yeah. I was like, oh, Al Milgram. Because what pissed me off is Bob guy. Hall did an amazing job on those four issues for yeah. the miniseries. And then we get Al Milgram in that shitty fucking Wonder Man outfit. Yep. I'm just like, I can't. <laughs> it's like, hey, Hawkeye swallowed a barrel. Like, how did yes. that happen? <laughs> Um, I, I don't have a Kurt Swan. I guess if I had to pick, um, I, I, uh, Team America. I don't know. Wow. I don't know. <laughs> well, you're close. I, I chose Captain America. That seemed like the most. Damn popular. you. <laughs> that's who exactly. Great minds, brother. Cause that's, yeah, that, that's who I have here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it just, I mean, he's, uh, you know, Kurt Swan, you just. You picture the guy, it's just all American, so that's, you know, the the route that you would take, so, yeah. Like I said, I, I tried not to kind of do the the one company's analog from the other, but that yep. just, it it just, I thought of Kurt Swan, and it just, it just fit. It just absolutely made sense. Yep. Uh, I have, all right, I do have a Joe Kubert one. Um. Who do you think, Vince? Wow. Uh, well, I have a very long list for Joe Kubert. I know you do, and I'm I, because, I would be surprised again, if mine is on your list. The, the guy could do anything. Yep. Um, obvious choices? G.I. Joe, The Nom. Mm-hmm. I have him on Red Wolf, uh, Kid Colt. The, uh, one of my favorite periods of Daredevil was when it was Daredevil Black Widow. I would put him on Daredevil then. Um, Captain America, I have Skull the Slayer down for some reason. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> That's awesome. I, I think Joe would just do a great job on that. Like Tor, only, you know, with a beefcake uh, modern guy and dinosaurs. Like it's just, Kubert, Joe would be great on Cloak and Dagger. I think he would do a wonderful job on any of the mutants books. Like it's hard not to put Joe Kubert on anything. Be, just because he was so multi- multifaceted and just could do everything great. Yeah, that's true. I, you know, there's things that immediately jump to mind. You know, Kazar. Yeah. Um, you know, but I, for some reason, similar to you know the one you had on the list was Daredevil. I don't know why that was the first. In terms of superhero books, that was the first thing that popped in my mind. Was I would like to, I would personally like to see him draw on Daredevil. Yeah, because I think that the DC analog, although the, the the characters aren't similar, but the the environment was was Ragman, mm-hmm. and yep. I, I think just taking Ragman out and putting Daredevil in 
the way he visualized that 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 downbeat cityscape i think would work really well with daredevil yeah i agree yeah I, I already had Daredevil for a DC artist that we haven't mentioned yet, so I didn't want to repeat. Um, so I wanted to see Joe do Thor, and he'd kill mm. it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah there's. Yeah. I mean, there's no wrong answer for Joe Kubert. <laughs> yeah, or Hercules. <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh, yeah, I think Joe would even do a fabulous job on FF. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, definitely not the Kirby sensibility, but. There have been some great runs that did not. Well, that's the thing. Up. That that was the thing that I, I I really liked about these this question was the idea of why we make these associations in our mind. Is it just because of familiarity? We're just so used to seeing somebody work on a certain type of book, or are are certain artists more suited for certain subject matters and certain characters? And they just, they either naturally gravitate towards it or editors look at their work and like, okay, you're on this book, you're on that book. And like you said, Vince, there's a lot of, you know, the, the people like Garcia Lopez and Kubert who multifaceted and can go anywhere. Um, but, you know, certain things just work really, really well with, with that character or that artist, you know? Yep. And, and I don't think Marvel. Uh, and Stan knew exactly what they had with Jack Kirby. Uh, I mean, I, I think they they kind of sort of figured it out that the guy was gold. But um, when Kirby went to DC, that pretty much absolved him from being you know within on our list here. But I'm trying to think. There's not a DC book that Kirby wouldn't excel at. And Ooh. and that, that that to me is is the thumbprint of like a really boss level god tier artist like Hubert and Garcia Lopez like Kirby you can put him on anything and he he would have just destroyed it and there wasn't before Jack went over to to uh, DC in, in what was it 1970 um, DC did not have an artist on the level of Jack. And I don't think they ever have. Um, it's just that the guy obviously walks on water with me, but just to look back and, and think of all the books that Kirby touched and you look at the product and it's just like, it's, it's like we haven't artistically caught up to Jack and we're talking like 63 on like what? Yeah. Well, and just the fact that when he did get to, to DC, he's like, I'm going to do multiple titles and they're all going to tie in together and I'm going to write and draw them. It's that, you know, you look at like the, the period when Frank Miller was doing Dark Knight Returns and Electra Lives Again and Electra Assassin and Daredevil Love and War. Like he was working on multiple projects, but th- other people were drawing some of those, whereas Kirby was like, no, I'm going to do all of it. Yep. <laughs> it's like unbelievable to me, just unbelievable. And uh, I, I know that we like to credit Byrne for revitalizing Superman, but DC got a lot of years off redoing um, Kirby's Jimmy Olsen. Like that mm-hmm. effectively, the Triangle Era, it's almost – Entirely oh, be, beholden, X. yeah. It's Dark it, Newsboy it, Legion. Entirely yeah. beholden to Jack Kirby's run on the on, on Jimmy Olsen and and the the Fourth World stuff, and it's, so it's uh, unparalleled creative genius. I mean, but that's I mean we already know that, right? So sure. Yeah. It uh, for a long time it bothered me that uh, that DC had to felt they had to redo Jack's. Superman. Oh yeah, yeah. Yet they have absolutely no problem when Kenner wants to do superpowers action figures based on that miniseries, and that's Jack's fucking version of Superman. Oh yeah, yeah. And I remember, um, I, I don't know the year, but DC released a series of card games. There was a Tarzan. There was a Superman. And they were basically puzzles on playing cards. And you had to put, you had to get maybe three, six, nine, twelve cards and arrange them 
in you to complete the image like marvel value stamps only mm -hmm. you know what i mean um yeah. and the kirby superman they did not redo the faces oh wow yeah and i, I was back in the day i was like wow kirby superman because i i was younger when mm -hmm. when he was working on the dc books and all i knew was his marvel stuff and I was yeah. like, holy crap. Um, who was the, maybe it was the Lone Ranger? Lone Ranger, Tarzan, and um, Superman. Oh, huh, okay. Yeah, they were cool. I, obviously, I don't have them anymore. But uh, really fun stuff. All right, is it my turn? Yes. I think so, yeah. Yes, yeah, because I think I, I, I have one more because we've already discussed everybody else. So, yeah. Okay. Um, Mike Sikowski. Oh. Hmm. Long run on Justice League of America. Yeah, so of course Avengers, but I would also, um, oh, you know what? I, it, it may look weird, but I, I, I'd, I'd like to see him do Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah, that's on going. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, I'll put him on a different team book. Then I'll put him on Champions. So oh, you nice. can get like Ghost Rider in there and, and yeah, then, get your Hercules yeah. on. And, yeah. yeah, I have Sikowski on two books: Alpha Flight. Oh, right, love mm -hmm. it. And the uh, Daredevil Black Widow era. I, I think Mike would do a, a superb job on that. Um, I, I mean, I only have him on one group, one team book. Yeah. But uh, I, I I don't normally um, gravitate towards team books. But Champions is a very good answer, and I, I'm I'm still out on on Amazing Spider Man. I don't know. <laughs> I think hey, about man, that. Listen, I know, you're you're a Ross Andrew fan. I mean, if I can, if, if I yeah. see Ross Andrew on Spider Man, then I I could see Scout. That's a good <laughs> topic. When you say Ross Andrew, I think Ross is um, and and Mike Esposito. If you wanted to uh, brainstorm a team that captured an entire era of the flagship character at both Marvel and DC, mm -hmm. I think um, Ross Andrew and Esposito, they did as well on the Superman uh, books and, and his supporting cast as they did on Amazing Spider-Man. I think those – it's weird. I don't think there's anybody that you can say, yeah, you know, uh, they did a wonderful job on Fantastic Four and, like, what else? Andrew and, and Esposito, they destroyed Amazing. I think it's the best run of Amazing ever. And then they, they did the same thing for Superman. Like, and Superman supporting cast under these guys were amazing. The uh, – for, for our patrons on the Slack um, – the uh, daily page rate for a while now has been Andrew and Esposito on Wonder Woman. <laughs> uh, there has been some Spider Man sprinkled in there. The there will be some. There will be. I'm I'm almost done with their Wonder Woman run, and then it's going to move on to another DC run. Um, but there is still some more. And and I also have Andrew not with Esposito or or with other anchors as well. But uh, yeah, there's um. They've they they worked for a long time together, and they've done some amazing work. And their styles, it, it, and it's not even just like, oh, this is this obviously looks like Ross Andrew and Tom Mike Esposito because some of this Wonder Woman stuff they like they went back and did some of her Golden Age stories, so they even illustrated the book to look like it was done in the forties, as opposed to twenty years later when the issue was actually published. So they they, they really are. I I didn't. I didn't give them as much credit as they deserved while I was growing up, but years later, as I got older, wiser, mature, I it, it it's obvious that that they they not only knew their shit, they 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 did phenomenal work together. Yeah, yeah. when I was young and dumb, I was like, oh, I'm glad that Ramita guy's off Spider Man now. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know right when you're a kid uh but I, I think it all factors into your personal golden age right yeah. i i got into amazing hardcore right when ross andrew and esposito came on the book and yeah. so that's my that's my golden age for amazing sure. spider-man yeah 
Well, can I tell a real quick champion story that's also about being a dumb kid? <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I grew up in, in Colorado, so most comic book stores were owned by Chuck Rosansky. And uh, there was a Mile High Comics in the local mall. And the Mile High Comics 2 collection had just came come out where Chuck found this immaculate collection of Marvel and DC books that were in perfect condition. And he put them in these really thick Mylar sleeves and he printed these uh, certificates of authenticity saying they were handpicked to be in the Mile High collection. But of course, for me, it was just like I coveted these things and I would look at them in the display case every time I went to the store. So Christmas time was coming up and I, I, I learned to be very specific with my parents after this, I just said, I want one of those Mile High collection books. But I didn't tell them which one I wanted. I really wanted like a Burn X-Men or a Miller Daredevil. And so Christmas morning, opening up presents, I see something sort of comic book shaped, open it up, and it was like issue seven of Champions. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I was so disappointed, and I, I'm sure I didn't hide it at all, but it was just like, oh, I thought I was going to get the X-Men, but <laughs> ended up really enjoying the issue. I didn't even know about the Champions at that point, but um, you know, my, my parents were very cool about getting me stuff that I wanted. I just needed to be very specific in that right. case. Yeah. yeah, A little bit more information. You probably would have got <laughs> Exactly. It. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, uh, is my fifth one the last one? Now I have one more. Go ahead, Alex Toth. Oh, oh wow, oh. shit! Because he did Doctor something St- d- good. Doctor Strange. Yeah, that that that's my answer, Doctor Strange. Okay. Wow, that's a good one. Um. For some reason, with most of these, you know, my my mind goes to Daredevil, but um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I could see him. I could see him on something like like Nova. I, I think you know. I mean, you, you you think about like Space Ghost and stuff. I think he'd be really good on on a, a cosmic or or space set book. Yep, my number one for Alex was Daredevil. Mm. Um, then I have Sergeant Fury in the Howling Commandos. I think he would do a <laughs> great job on that. And for some reason, I see Toth doing Ghost Rider. Hmm. The Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider, which, yeah. you know, doesn't add up, but he had such a strong black and white sensibility where he, he I think he was a master of shadows um, and design. And yeah. his line is just phenomenal. I would love to, I think it's more like a wish than it would be, like, who knows? It could go either way, right? But um, and I would like him to letter it as well. Cool. Since since we're dreaming, right? right. <laughs> we might as well. I think uh, Toth's I, handwriting was amazing. I think the reason maybe we're gravitating towards Daredevil is is in my mind because of what Miller did on that book. Uh, you know, with 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 Jansen, it was so revolutionary and so different than anything else. To me, it's always the go to as this. Uh, you know, creative depot where you can just like plug in right. new, fresh ideas. So I, you know, pl- taking an artist who's really expressive like that, um, really unique, it, it makes sense to put him on that title. Let's be honest, right? Um, there are a lot of Marvel books that are beloved to us. Amazing Spider-Man, Fantastic Four. But has there, in terms of aesthetics has there ever been a work at marvel that eclipsed born again for me it's no like born again is is the absolute perfect little condensed nugget of everything that is daredevil but it's done and, and massey you and i were talking about this before in terms of respectability Born Again doesn't feel like a superhero book. It, it sure. feels like you're, you're you're reading combination noir, 
uh, existential crisis of faith. It's 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 just a, a little bit of nunsploitation. It, it, it's this this weird, crystalline, beautiful thing within the Marvel of Wah that just doesn't. I, I think it's just better than everything else they've ever done. And it's well, there's, I, there's there's no denying the the sheer magic that. Mazzucchelli was capable of sure yeah in, in in whatever he did you know beyond the the superhero stuff that he did at marvel the and and batman year one his mind just works like no other artist and for frank miller to then team up with him and and, and work on that it it that's impossible to recreate right i think the people that come closest to that i i what I who I would assume would be very much inspired is like Brew Baker and Phillips. Like that's, I would imagine if you said, okay, what you know, what is the, your your touchstone for everything that you do? They would probably point to Born Again. Yep. The uh, yeah, I mean, the only thing that might come close to being something that, that that could be considered a self-contained story that that just makes you so happy or or uh or so thrilled with with what this medium can offer might be might be the demon bear saga but it's completely different and and it's it's visually stunning but it doesn't it, it for my it, for my mind it, my money it, it it's not. It, it's not on the same level. The only. Right. It, I think Born Again is far more relatable. Absolutely, and, yeah. and the only thing that, and it doesn't. It doesn't detract from the story. It doesn't make it any less because it's necessary for the closing moments of the book. The only thing that really keeps it from being an absolute stunner of a self-contained story. Is the Avengers coming in to not save the day, but Captain America has to talk down Nuke. Thor brings down the storms to get rid of the flames. Um, Iron Man is there for crowd control. So I, it, aside from those few panels, and when Captain America is called in because he has to deal with Nuke, uh, aside from that, you wouldn't even know that really it had anything else to do with the Marvel universe. It's just, it's, it's, it's Daredevil, it's Matt, Matt Murdock versus Wilson Fist. That's the entirety of the seven issues. And, and, but here's a reminder that it is in the Marvel universe and that, and that doesn't take away from it, but it does. It, it is the only thing that really just, um, I'm not gonna say it even takes it down a notch. It's just, it, it, it is, I absolutely, it is, it is hands down, a top five story for me, period, of all of comics and of all the decades. But um, the, the the more I start to just think about things as 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 I as I've thought about it over the years, um, I there are there are every once in a while I have a small moment where I'm just like, man, I kind of wish no other characters were in this book. They are. That's that, fine. I if that was editorially mandated. Like, if you're going to have this high level of a threat, you got to. You sure, can't yeah. have that happening. In, and in who else? Happen. Who else would you have take down Nuke? Who else is going to talk this person, this character, off the ledge? And Daredevil's not. Uh, it it but, has to be Cap- same thing with Captain America when he has to when when Punisher needs to be put in his place. It's like who else do you bring in except Captain America? But conceptually, though, that's Frank saying this is America sweeping under the rug the disenfranchised, war torn PTSD. Uh, you know, scarred soldiers. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. I mean, the fact that he used Captain America was absolutely perfect. Yep. Be- yep. Because it's just this is what we do when you sacrifice everything for your country, and then your country forgets about you, right? So yep. Captain America comes in and cleans up. It, it was it was a masterstroke on Frank's part to do that. Whether it was yep. editorially mandated or not, I mean, he made it work. Mm-hmm. You know. All right, we we gotta speed it up a little bit because we're yeah. we're nearing the end. So let's do the. Oh my 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 last my last DC on a Marvel book is Dave Gibbons, and just to speed things up, 
it's the book we just got done talking about. I, I, I'd love to see a Dave Gibbons Daredevil. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I got uh, uh, Brian Boland. Um, oh. I think instead of working on uh, Camelot 3000, he should have gone over it. <laughs> And did Deathlock. Yeah, working on cars. Oh. I just would be a mechanic. <laughs> Deathlock would be great. Deathlock would have been fucking awesome. Yeah. 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 Oh, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, poor Mike W. Barr. He had such high hopes for that. He had to be running other things. This just wasn't it. Yeah. yeah. This wasn't uh, anybody's. <laughs> no, it wasn't. No. It wasn't All right, so let's flip the script. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Marvel artists going to DC. So... Um, I went with my one of my favorite Marvel artists. Um and that's not all he did. He had an extensive career, but he he was one of the uh he touched a lot of books for Marvel, and that is John Severin. Mm, ooh, okay. Who would we put Severin uh, on? Or what? Why does he keep saying who? Mm, uh, there's a couple uh, no brainers. Jonah Hex. That yeah. Was, yeah, I was thinking Westerns uh, initially. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that if you if you were to put him on something like Superman and, and let him, you know, because he was always given more realistic stuff to do, but I, you know, who knows what he would have done with a more yeah, fantastical you'd have, to give him a cat, you'd have to give him a book where, like, as a, cause depending on when he would start drawing Superman, is it going to look like Christopher Reeve yeah. or George Reeves? Well, so, how about, how about uh, Green Arrow? That would work. Yeah. That would yeah. work. Yeah. Yeah. I have Severn on Sergeant Rock, on on Soldier, of course, Tomahawk, uh, The Shadow. I think uh, Ooh, yeah. Severn would have kicked Ooh, the doors the off the shadow. The question, yeah, Black, very good. Black Hawk, All Star Squadron. Like I think again, Severn didn't display. Uh, maybe this isn't fair, but Severn's versatility wasn't as on display at Marvel than it was in Cracked. Like in in the pages of Crack magazine, Severn could do anything. He yeah. could do superheroes, monsters, war stories, like everything. Um, and then look at the EC books, where Severin is primarily a war artist. So, yeah, I think Severin's one of those guys that just uh, could do a lot, but I don't think he got the opportunity to really let that stuff show. Yeah, it was. It, he could have, you know, been very good on a John Constantine book. Oh yeah, yeah, no. yeah. So who's next? Uh, I'll go next. I got Mike Plug. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> Yikes! I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure Swamp Thing is just a given. Yeah, so, that, that's pretty much. Uh, we gotta I think outside the box there. Huh. Um, I, you know, uh, punch myself in the face. I didn't even think of Plug, which is that's on, wow on me. Blasphemous. Yeah. Uh, Hawkman. Oh, okay. Sharp, yeah. Um. Wow, Plug. Well, I could be, you know, a, an idiot and say Night Force because he do a good <laughs> job on that. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I own multiple issues of Night Night Force. Never read it. Flip through it a lot of times. But yeah, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, that's, that's, it's that's it's good more to it's more a gene showcase than it is. Yeah. A, yeah. yeah. Well, I I put him on uh, the creeper. Yes. Oh, yeah. perfect. Uh, awesome. Demon. He'd be great on Demon. Demon. For sure. Yep. yep. Uh, Bob Layton. Okay. I have nothing for Layton. Yeah. Yeah. This this I because like like we discussed it's. It's not uh, it's not as easy to um, find too many Marvel artists uh, that made their way over to DC, but um, of course Bob worked at Valiant for a while. But uh, because of the tech, because of the characters, because of some of the um, maybe uh, aliens we'd see from time to time, uh, the new Teen Titans. I'm thinking cyborgs, uh, cyborgs look. Uh, Starfire, her sister, fighting yeah. out in space. Uh, I, I, I think he'd um, 
he'd be a good fit for that book. I think he'd do a good job on Green Lantern, too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because he'd get to do all the different constructs from the ring and, you know, make all that kind of tech doing that. Um, Yeah, I could see that. What's next? Who do you have, Vince? Um, Sal Basima. Oh, I got him on my list. Okay. Uh, oh, man. Uh, <laughs> Superboy. Wow. The Connor, the Connor Ken. Yeah, I never would have thought that. But, I mean, Sal would be great at it, right? He, yeah. Yeah. I would, uh, I'd say Hawk and Dove. Interesting. I like it. I think the DC book that Basima was born to draw but never did doom patrol oh yeah that's hot because sal was always um they put him on on except for um spider-man the peter parker run sal was always on odd books like yeah the hulk and rom and i mean he did a great job on whatever he uh he touched he was, he was but, the utility man yeah he he just had and and you know spittle in the mouth so i'm i, I think Sal would be great on Doctor Fate. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ragman, just just the the weirder DC books. I think he'd be really great. I mean, he would. I don't know about Superman or Batman, right? But I, well, I, I, not to. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll jump ahead of Matthew here. My Sal Bushima pick was uh, was Batman and the Outsiders. Yeah, of because of the quirk. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, yeah, Metamorpho yeah, yeah. would be great for for yeah, Sal on his own, sure. But yeah, yeah. but Metamorpho and then uh, the, the the different uh, whatever Halo does. But yeah, I mean, yeah, Batman would be there. But I mean, the rest of the characters, I think Sal would have fun with. Well, Sal did a bunch of Defenders too, right? So I mean, yep. he's he showed ability with team books. So yeah, why yeah. not? Yeah, that makes sense. All right. So um, now it's your turn, Matthew. All right. Uh, so I've got John Romita Sr. Excellent. Oh. I already know if one of Vince's answers on that. Yes, you do. And it's the perfect one. It's like, I don't know why I didn't think of that immediately, but yeah. So. Mm. Dap, you want to know what I picked? Yes. Wonder Woman. Damn. Can you imagine a John oh. Romita Sr. Wonder Woman? Like, I think it would be one of those runs that's up there with like the best of the. But it's it's yeah, so no. easy to say that John Romita Senior, from his interior work to his covers, like he was next to Kirby. I think Romita Senior was the go to guy at Marvel for a lot of years. Uh, I also have him on Legion and Superman. Mm. Okay. Yeah, Superman's definitely a good one. Yeah. Can you? But if he if if Romita Senior did Legion, all of the women. Would be like knockout gorgeous. It's <laughs> true, and even the ones yeah. that that shouldn't have been still would have been right. So it's just yeah. like his all, all his men, all dapper. Yeah, all his yeah. men would be Peter Parker handsome. It'd be yep. wonderful, wonderful. Wow. Who do you have uh, Ramita Senior on? Dap. I, uh, I could, I, I, I would like to see Green Lantern. Yeah. Yeah, that was almost my pick. I I went with Mister Miracle, um, just to see wow. him draw Big Barda. That's great. But that's crazy. Also, like he's <laughs> such a great cartoonist. I think that's one of the things he's underrated for is just the almost. <sighs> oh, Plastic oh, Man. Yeah, he'd be great on Plastic Man because he's got almost a, like a reined in Jack Davis. Like if somebody told Jack Davis, like, don't be so angular, don't be so loose. Ramita's got some of that. So I, I feel like if you gave him a title where the characters can be even wilder than Spider Man could, like he could you know do some really interesting stuff with that. Yeah, agree. And Big yeah. Barda. Yeah. Um it's a good thing that he never drew Big Barda because puberty would have came a lot sooner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh, I think there's room for more. Um how about John Basima? Yep, I got him on my list, and I will. Oh, because uh, John, I, I had to be careful because of uh, because, of course, he he did do uh, 
the Treasury Edition. He did that crossover. So he has done a piece of work. Um, but I, uh, I I wouldn't mind. This is my pick, but I, I, I'd love to see John on Wonder Woman. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Although I when I first came up with his name, I was – but again, this is like – this might be too close. Um, Warlord. I mean, at least this way people would actually sure. buy and read Warlord. But. Oh, damn, yeah. Well, I could see if you did a Wonder <laughs> Woman that was <laughs> uh, more based in the Amazonian world. Yes. Yeah, more yeah, yeah. sword and sandal type stuff. Yeah. 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 I was going to say Commandy just because I know Ooh. he's not big on drawing superheroes or right. wasn't. So yeah. I, I think that would give him a nice area to play in where it was, you know, not stuff he didn't really enjoy doing. Uh, but with still a fantasy element, it would be blasphemous though. Just who took over after Kirby? Nobody. There was like a brief. There's, there's no <laughs> issues after Kirby. <laughs> okay, all right, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, for Big John, uh, Dap took my first pick, which would oh. be Warlord. Yeah. yeah. Still on the nose, but I yeah. also oh, you have. Really did pick that? Okay. I did. Yeah. I also wow. have him on Blackhawk. Yeah, wow, that would yeah. be great. Because I didn't want to keep it within the realm of sword and sorcery, because that's again, that's the obvious choice. But lest we forget, Basima had a killer run on Avengers, yep. which he didn't enjoy doing, but it's still a great piece of work. Well, uh, and his Wolverine stuff is awesome, and that's yeah. pretty grounded. I mean, it's not. I mean, Wolverine's barely in his costume in any of yeah. those. There's not Little a lot X-Men of around. real, yeah. you know, crazy villains or anything, but. Um, I just something just popped in my head that would work for him. Oh, the shadow. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, his Wolverine run is perfect. I I, yeah. I adore that run. I really do. And yeah. it, I think rereading it for what was it? The book of the month. We 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 read the Wolverine stuff. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Yep. And and it just it yeah, reignited my whole French stuff. Yeah, it reignited my love of Wolverine. Which yeah, is, I I ended up buying the the black and white reprints of that when you guys did that episode. Oh, it's I so flipped good. through that all the time. It's so good. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it looks so good in black and white too. Yep. Do we have any others? Uh, well, my my actual pick for John Bashima on my list because I want to see him draw as many characters as possible is the Brave and the Bold. Mm. Or DC Comics presents. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I mean, he already did Superman, so I was trying to think of something that you know where he wouldn't have have had the opportunity. To right. Try. I mean, not that Superman couldn't show up in Brave and the Bold, but at least have him Batman as the star, and then whoever else shows up. But yeah, yeah, su- his Superman is great. I love his Superman. Yeah. Amazing. All right. Um, anything else before we wrap up the big two? What do we call it? Big uh, two switcheroo. Big two switcheroo. <laughs> I have I have Jim Valentino. And I have Ron Lim. Wow. Hmm. Whew. Um. Yikes. <laughs> uh, Valentino. Um. Ambush bug. I like it. Yeah, that's a yeah. But that's so synonymous with Kip Giffen. Like, it's hard to stick somebody else in there. Yeah, has wow. anybody even ever tried to do an ambush bug that wasn't given? Or, 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 How or about, flooring let me for that minute. Um, Valentino on Deathstroke. That's weird. That's weird in a good way. I like that. I would want to peg him on a book that, you, like, uh, the the DC equivalent of Guardians of the Galaxy, which right, I yeah. guess, you know, mm-hmm. w- would be uh, Green Lantern, maybe, or, or something like that. But, yeah, I think he'd do a really odd job on Deathstroke. <laughs> I think that's... <laughs> so maybe Teen Titans, too? Well, I have him on uh, Infinity, Inc. Well, yeah. Okay. There's a- Did you... Because that didn't uh, McFarlane work on that? Yes. So you, were you making like an image connection? No, no, no. I, def- oh. I definitely wasn't. I definitely wasn't. No. Okay. Uh, and Ron Lim. Ron Lim is just. It was. I was. I was looking for something for him to do. And uh, <laughs> I, 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 figured, <laughs> I, just, just, I was like, yeah. He's like, hey, what? You guys got any work for me? So I'm just like, hey, you know what? I'm like, I could see. I I, I didn't want anything spacefaring. 
I didn't want uh, I didn't want anything too cosmic, so I was like, you know what, I'm just going to bring him down to street level, and uh, and and I uh, I gave him Green Arrow. Just see him have fun with the quivers and the arrows, and I just yeah, why not? Why not? It's, but the Mike Grell hooded version, the Sherwood Forest version, not the uh, not the not the Neil Adams. Yeah, that's what I was thinking with the John Severin thing, that version. Yeah, I got to go in for Ron Lim. Yeah, Captain Adam. That is a yeah. good one. Yeah, yeah, that's a really great answer. Yeah, because I'm I'm thinking of the Pat Broderick when 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 it came back, and and yeah, yeah, I could see Lim slipping in there real easy. Yeah, I like that. All right, cool. Big two switcheroo. Uh, if you I got two two more real quick. I oh, just nice. Gotta, I gotta say, so uh, I was just gonna put Mike Zek on DC Comics Presents. Love it. And then Barry Windsor Smith. My first thought was Omac, <sighs> partly because I love the Machine Man series so much. So I thought the Trimpy Windsor Smith combo going over and doing Omac. But then I thought it would be great to have him do a Vertigo version of Metamorpho. Oh, wow. Well, here's some conceptual continuity for you. Um, okay. Since Barry Windsor Smith began his career as a Jack Kirby clone, mm-hmm. I would put him on the Fourth World books. Yeah. That yep. would yep. be great. Yeah. Well, I think I – so the other thing with Omac, I just – I always associate him with Storm. I know you don't want to hear that, but – That's okay. She exists. Because, you know, the, the – what is that? Love death? Is that what those – Life death, yeah. Life death, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Um so the Mohawk with Omac just stuck in my brain. Nice. But, uh, it's more the Machine Man thing. I think um, looking at his, his work like Adastra in Africa, he'd do a great job on – and the Life Death. He would do a wonderful job on, on Wonder Woman. Sure. And, and again, yeah. it's, it's Barry Windsor Smith. So there's, uh, we'd get maybe yep. two issues a year, but they would be great. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Big two switcheroo. If you enjoy stuff like this, let us know. We'll do more of it. Um, it's it's a whole lot of fun, and it's just relaxed um, comic book conversation, and that's what we love here. Uh, please take a look at our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com. We'll get you the stuff you want at the price you want to pay. And don't forget our Patreon, Patreon.com forward slash 11 o'clock comics. We have a whole mess of stuff going on over there. Downloads, as Dap said, um, page a day, cover a day. We have um, EOC Loves, where we spotlight the work of an artist uh, every month and just litter the slack with with covers and interior images. It's just a whole lot of fun. And you can talk about Many things on the Slack, not just comics. So check it out. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash 11 o'clock comics. In your travels, it's a crazy time. Um, Dogs sleeping with cats. Because Eric Larson released another issue of Savage Dragon. This is three issues of Savage Dragon in three months. Crazy. I don't know what to think anymore, but it's a great feeling. Um, I'm not going to say too much about it. This is Savage Dragon 269. There's a lot of vagina in it. <clears throat> um, Mickey Mouse uh, is a perv and a rapist. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Just go read it. It's it's Eric Larson on Inged. In the best way possible. Uh, you really need to support this book because as comics go, it's one of the best. Savage Dragon 269. Nice. Uh, travels, since uh, Jason isn't here, and I'm not going to spoil it anyway. It's just going to be real quick because it picks up immediately after the third issue. A lot of action in here. It's really fast-paced. Um, the fourth issue of Duke from Image. And Skybound by Joshua Williamson, Tom Riley, Jordan Belair, and Bruce Wooten. Um, the cover doesn't lie. I, you know, I, I checked and 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 Duke, because he was shot in the leg in the previous issue, he's showing the wound on the cover. The cover is very reminiscent. Uh, is is pretty much indicative of what you'll find inside the issue. Um, and uh, there's just. 
there's 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 maybe one or two oh shit moments within uh looks absolutely phenomenal i uh gotta see where this goes with the fifth issue um not that i'm really worried but it's all about the journey with this so uh yeah definitely if you haven't um i'm sure you might as well at this point wait for the inevitable trade but uh if you are reading them as they come out then absolutely join me in saying in your travels duke number four Well, I got uh, a crowdfunder campaign I'd like people to look at in their travels uh, from my my good buddy, uh, Charles Forsman. He's got a new book coming out uh, called Here Comes Chesley. And, um, you know, Charles did uh, The End of the Fucking World. He did Revenger. And this is I haven't read it yet, but I know it's going to be good. Um looks kind of like a sugar and spike type of book or maybe herbie um but uh the campaign's underway and uh it's already funded so um to get in and get a copy of it uh, it's just at crowdfunder.com and if you search charles forsman or chesley that's c-h-e-s-l-e-y i love the ellipsis i love it yes Yep. Yeah, this looks really good. How did I not know about this? And his last name is Nooseneck, and I just realized he has a noose around his neck. So I bet there's a little bit of bleak uh, oh, element nice. to this. So, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, I'm on it. All right, everybody. Thank you, Matthew, for uh, being here with us. Thank you. What do you say you drop by uh, next episode, too? Yeah, so next week, uh, seven days from now. All right. <laughs> no, 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 just uh, four or five. Four or five. Okay, yeah, yes. whatever. I put it on my calendar, and then I will talk to you guys in four to five days. Excellent. See you then. All okay. right. <laughs> All right, everybody. Hey, do yourself a favor. Buy some comics. Talk about them. Read them. Love them. And then come to our Slack and talk about them more. Or our, our socials. we got the Facebook thing going on. We're everywhere because we love you so much. Say goodnight. Damn it. I don't have anything. Oh, well. Woe is me, D- uh, David. Goodnight. I'll make sure I have one for next week. David, you mean, you mean four or five days? Yes. Okay. Tell them you love them. Love them. Oh, yeah. That's it for that one.